Hello, my name is Dr. Luke Miller, and I'm here to talk about the urinary tract ultrasound exam with the Butterfly IQ device. So the uh, urinary tract ultrasound is a very important exam uh, clinically, and it's one that we use all the time. And so it's really important to understand what the exam involves, how to do it, and uh, why those findings are relevant clinically. Let's get started. The first thing to understand is how to get the, the proper views of the kidneys. So uh, important thing to understand about ultrasound physics is that sound travels much better through solid organs than it does through gas pockets. And so you need to find a window so that you can kind of avoid those things that are not going to give you a very good view. So one of the best uh, views in the body or one of the best windows is actually the liver. It's a large solid organ. Now this is a little bit of a counter to, counterintuitive way to think about windows, is usually we think of something being uh, more clear and empty as being a good window. But in ultrasound physics, it's reversed. It's large, solid things that are actually the best windows because that's what sound waves travel through the best. On the other hand, gas pockets are terrible windows because they cause a lot of shadowing and, and sound waves just can't get through them very well. So when you're looking at the right kidney here, you wanna be able to either get under the ribs to look through the liver at the kidney or, or even between the, the 10th and 11th or 11th and 12th. You find some very good windows there. The left side's a little bit harder because your window's smaller. You have to use the spleen as a window to be able to image that left kidney, uh, but you know, it's a smaller target. And also the bowel on that side's a little bit looser and so it can kind of float up and, and get in the way. And so sometimes you have to be a little bit more creative in your positioning and have your patient roll up on their side or something like that in order to get the, the bowel gas out of the way. So here's another little anatomical diagram showing you what our windows are like. So this, this cross-sectional view shows you, you're trying to shoot here through the liver in order to see the right kidney and here through the spleen to see the left. So now what kind of things are we looking for with the exam? So first of all, we wanna be able to kind of get the dimensions of the kidney. So that's gonna include length measurements for both. Um, and then you're also gonna want cross sections of the kidney from uh, both the long axis, so kind of going long ways on the kidney. You wanna get a medial view on it and a lateral view. And then you also wanna get the transverse axis, which is gonna be kind of at the top of the kidney, middle of the kidney, and the bottom of the kidney, kind of cutting right through there. And then uh, you're gonna to wanna to be able to get comparison shots for both kidneys. So for the right kidney, you wanna get an image of it with the liver so that you can compare the, the echogenicity or the brightness of the kidney to the liver. And then you want to do the same thing for the left kidney, only with the spleen. You want to be able to compare it to the spleen because that can kind of give you a, a, some sense of how, how echogenic it is, which can tell you uh, about what kind of conditions you need to be worried about. And then finally, you're looking for a lot of different abnormalities. So increased or decreased vascularity, cysts, abnormal anatomy, or stones. Let's go into a little bit more detail about what abnormalities will look like on the exam. So first of all, the kidneys should be about the same size. There shouldn't be more than about one centimeter difference in size on any of these uh, dimensions. And then the length should be about, eh, about nine to 13 centimeters, while the AP width, or front to back, should be about 2.5 centimeters. And the transverse diameter should be about four to five centimeters. Uh, much bigger or smaller than that, and uh, you start to worry a little bit. Then the other important thing to look for is, is measuring the cortical thickness and the parenchymal thickness. And so we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, when we have an anatomy diagram to show you what those mean. And then you also wanna be able to see a clear differentiation between the cortex and the medulla. If you can't see that, you know, that can give you a hint that maybe there's some kind of inflammatory process going on. Then the cortex should also be darker than the liver. If it's not, you know, that kind of gives you some sense that maybe there's some scar tissue or something making the kidney more echogenic than it should be. And then uh, the pyramids in the kidney should be slightly darker than the cortex, but only slightly. If they're substantially darker, uh, that can actually be indicative of some kidney disease like acute tubular necrosis. So, you know, that can also be another reason to worry. And of course, you're looking for hydronephrosis. Because hydronephrosis can be concerning if you're seeing large dilated calyces that can indicate some kind of obstruction downstream. If you're seeing a complex cysts, uh, that means cysts that aren't just kind of a simple bubble but have masses or, or kind of multiple loculations inside of them, that can be very concerning for more of a tumor process. Uh, then you're 
you want to look for stones, which are actually very easy to see on ultrasound because they light up uh, very bright. And then they also cast a shadow, so they can be quite easy to identify. And then you're also looking for uh, any gross abnormalities that can be caused by trauma or, or congenital anomalies, so like a horseshoe kidney or ectopic kidneys or kidney lacerations. Any of those things would be things you could see on a, on a kidney ultrasound. It's important to talk about kind of the internal structure of the kidneys. And so we were talking a little bit about uh, the cortex earlier. So this is what the cortex looks like. It's kind of this thin outer layer around here, and you can measure it from the capsule here to these darker uh, kind of pyramidal shapes uh, that are the medullary pyramids. This should be about six millimeters or more. Uh, it's less than that. That can be indicative of chronic kidney disease. And then these are the pyramids here. So these are the medullary parts. So the cortex and the medulla are both part of the parenchymal kidney. And that should be greater than about 15 millimeters. So if it's less than that, then that yeah, that's also a cause for concern. And then here in the middle, uh, this will be the renal pelvis and the calyces. So it's the, kind of the collecting system. This is where you can find a lot of stones, and it should be kind of bright white on an ultrasound. I'll show you a picture of that. Let's get to some images here. So as you can see, there's the parenchyma is dark, and the inside here, that's that's the, the pelvic. Uh, the renal pelvis and the calyces, much lighter. Okay, so that's where you're going to be measuring right there. All right, and then this is kind of your full kidney measurements. So you want to measure the length here from end to end, so about 14 centimeters. Uh, you know, it's a little bit bigger than average. Uh, and uh, th this, this measurement right here is actually a little bit wrong, the, the ultrasound uh, tech. Did that incorrectly and so I made a more correct measurement which would be about here to here which is probably closer to about five centimeters which is closer to the normal range. All right here's some transverse renal views right here so these are going to be kind of horizontal cuts across the kidney it's about five centimeters and about six centimeters so a little bit large but uh, nothing nothing too concerning. All right and then you want to be able to measure the parenchymal thickness within the internal structure of the kidney. So as you can see here, uh, it's a fairly large, uh, fairly large parenchyma, about 28 millimeters. So it's well over kind of the mark that we start to be concerned about chronic kidney disease. All right. And then here, here's an example of a parenchyma that's much more atrophic. So as you can see right here, it's probably close to about 13 millimeters. So it's just under the limit. And that's when we start to be more concerned about chronic kidney disease. All right, so the next important thing to talk about is bladder anatomy. That's a critical part of the urinary tract exam as well. So this anatomical diagram shows you the views that you're looking for. Unfortunately, you don't usually have to worry about having bowel gas in the way because the bladder is close to the surface. But you have to worry about getting around the, the the pubis bone right here, because that can kind of get in the way. And so that's your anatomical landmark. You want to find that and have the probe right on top of it. Sometimes you actually have to push in a little bit to get around the pubis bone so that you can image the entire gallbladder and you don't miss anything. So there's a picture of proper uh, probe positioning on a live human being. So as you can see, between the umbilicus and the pubis, and you're looking for a large uh, kind of dark cavity, and that's when you'll know that you found the bladder. All right, so what are you looking for in a bladder, bladder exam? So you kind of want to you, know, you could think of it as drawing maybe a tic-tac-toe on the bladder. You know, you're getting three different views, both uh, kind of up and down, and then horizontally as well. So right, midline, and left, and then you want some transverse views that are starting at the dome or the top of the bladder, middle of the bladder, and the base of the bladder. And the next thing you're looking for uh, is you're going to turn on the Doppler and look for some ureteric jets. Make sure that both kidneys are actually emptying urine into the bladder. And then you're going to look, you're going to actually have the, batter, uh, the patient void, ensure that they can void, uh, and look at their bladder volume post micturition. So if there's still a lot of urine being retained, even after they try to urinate, you know, that's indicative of urinary retention, which can cause damage to the kidneys. and, and uh, make patients get UTIs and some other complications. So it's very important to be able to identify those and be able to intervene. And then of course you're also going to be looking for any masses or stones, uh, asymmetries in bladder wall thickness, 
or overly thick uh, bladder wall uh, musculature or endothelium, and that can be uh, that can be concerning because it makes you think about malignancy. And then also overdistended bladder will kind of lead you down the route to thinking about urinary retention. All right, so we're going to show you a, a normal bladder exam. So you can kind of see what that looks like. All right, so it's a transverse view. And there it is. It's looking very symmetrical. The wall doesn't look too thick. There's no stones or masses inside. So it's, that's a beautiful bladder. All right. And then here's some pictures showing the different views. So this is the longitudinal view of the bladder. It's kind of up and down, right across the midline there. And these are some of the measurements you can take from top to bottom and front to back, essentially. And then the transverse, you know, side to side here. All right. And then I'm going to show you what some ureteric jets look like. So these should be happening approximately every 30 seconds or so. So if you don't see them, that can mean that there's an obstruction on one side or an AKI or something like that. So reason for concern. All right, so the Doppler's on and there you go. Little red, red jet shooting out. So those are the ureteric jets on both sides. A beautiful image. All right, and another neat thing you can do with the Butterfly IQ is that you can actually have an automated uh, bladder volume estimation tool. So I'm going to show you how to use that. So first, you're going to turn on your bladder uh, preset. Then you're going to go down to the lower right and click the tool section, which will bring up this volume tool. And then you click, uh, you identify the bladder, click calculate, and then you actually sweep the, the scan through the entire bladder. And you want to make sure it's getting the entire volume there. And then the AI is actually going to go back and show you its work. It's going to show you what it thinks the bladder is since my highlight in blue. And then you can make sure that, sure enough, it's identifying the actual bladder. And then there you go. Then you have its, its estimation. It's a very useful tool. It makes it very easy. So the cutoffs you're looking for is uh, if you have a patient who's having abdominal pain or you know, complaining that they're not able to void and uh, they're having 300 cc's or more left in the bladder after voiding, probably warrants intervention. And if they're symptomatic, even, even 200 to 300 cc's, it's a little bit more equivocal, but if they're symptomatic, uh, that, that's probably a good time to intervene as well. If it's less than 200 cc's, it means they probably don't have urinary retention. So it's not something you need to be as concerned about. All right, thank you for watching.